Welcome back to the In Touch Stream Masters. We're here for season X of StarCraft 2, celebrating 10 years of eSport action. And we are here to start Group D. Before going into Group D, let's take a look at the other groups that have played out so far, because three of them have now officially been completed. Group A is Sue and MMA, B, Fantasy and Innovation, and now with Group C finishing up another Korean Terran 4GG goes through with the first non-Korean Lambo going through in second place, which leaves us with a couple of games left now. So we've got four games coming up this evening in Group D. It's gonna be starting up with Nurcho versus Tilo, and off stream or on a secondary stream is going to be Stardust versus Patient. So let's talk a little bit about Group D first of all. The two Korean Protoss players, and we've got the two European Zergs. Yes, on paper you would say, well, that's going to be two more Koreans making it through, but I don't think that these two Protosses are untouchable. They are not the same level as the innovations and the Sus and the fantasies we saw earlier. I think they're beatable. Of course, it is a tricky matchup for a lot of Zerg players right now, but these Zergs have shown that they have been putting in a lot of work and they started to figure it out a little bit. It's still difficult for Zerg, but it's doable, and I truly believe that Nurcio or TLO has what it takes to advance, and maybe in a crazy world, even both. Yeah. T TLO, especially looking at this group, actually, for me, I think he can definitely contest mm. with them. Uh, obviously, looking at the group makeup, it's two very aggressive and kind of gimmicky Protoss there from the from the Korean region, and then it's Nurcio and T TLO is like the sign of Zerg cannibal. He'll take on any Zerg he really wants. And also, actually, watching some of his games like yesterday when he was in practice, and today, for example, uh, he looked really, really fast, like the fastest I've ever seen TLO at the moment, so he's really on point. Yeah, I mean, let's talk a little bit about TLO, because uh, he came through uh, in convincing fashion in the open bracket. He didn't lose a single map, and he defeated two really, really strong players. Uh, he defeated Patrick Drogo, of course, 2-0, and he also defeated Euthermal 2-0, and he just looked good. There was nothing else to really say about it, as you were saying, Claris. Yeah, he, he is looking good right now. Um, as I say, it really looks like all of that practice that he has been doing with that Team Liquid Bootcamp has paid off. And even, it's not only like, you can say something like, yeah, he's, he looks really fast or whatever. But the point is, is that his, the actions when I was watching him practice upstairs, you know, it wasn't something he was expending on mindless actions. Everything was centered around good, strong, multi-pronged attacks uh, and just being able to control his opponents. So I think TLO, could easily get out of this group top place. Yeah, I'm leaning slightly more towards TLO as well when it comes to Nurcho. I just like the way that TLO is playing at the moment. I like the way that he's approaching the Zerg versus uh, Protoss matchup in general. And I also feel that these two Protoss, and I like that you brought it up, they are not your standard Protoss. They're not your Blink Stalker sentry type of Protoss, three bases. They may be able to do it, but Stardust in particular is ridiculously aggressive. And then also, you know, uh, patience has always been a little different. Often like this weird pseudo two base, three base all ins. So I think there are options for both of these though, like for Nurcho, a little less convinced than for TLO, but I believe that both Eurozergs have a realistic shot. Well, Nurcho is not a full-time player right now. He's gone back to school and he has been for the last year or so, or even a little bit more than that. But with Nurcho, is, it's difficult to tell exactly where he is in StarCraft at all times, because we don't really follow him. He doesn't play in that many tournaments compared to where he used to be. But for me at least, following the WCS, is sometimes he turns up and sometimes he plays out of his mind and is able to beat some really, really good players and has a good win record against the players within this group. For example, his head-to-head -head versus TLO over the years, this is taken yeah. you know, over, over the years, is 15 series wins to five which is a massive, massive head-to-head. -head. But in recent times, obviously he's not as strong as he used to be because he doesn't play as much. But I, I like the aspect of also this being the Challenger Season 2 rematch where they both played against each other, Roddy. Yeah, that is always fun, and I'm sure that they didn't forget it. And I also think that uh, Nurcho has been playing quite a bit of Legacy of the Void already, but he still made it here, and that says something. And indeed, he's not the Nurcho that we saw in 2013 where he was one of the absolute best players in Europe. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I would even say on his good days, he was better than Stefan. Oh, no. Like that whole yeah, story yeah, cup, yeah. four, five, what was it? Five maybe, or six, he was so incredibly good. Like it wasn't even funny. It is a very, very rare occasion in StarCraft 2 that there is a final of a StarCraft 2 tournament where it's a foreigner against a Korean. And, it, and you kind of hope that the Korean wins a map so it gets closer. That's how good Nurcho was back then. Completely wiped the floor back then. Was it first or, it was, I always confuse it with it, first or the other Protoss, but he won 4-0, it was so convincing. He was extremely good, and he still is good, but he's yeah. not 
as dominating as he, he was. He did come through the European qualifiers, which is a good thing in itself. He defeated Kung Fu Panda, who is, of course, a Premier yeah. League player, and also a Laser, another Premier League player. So it's not like he picked up on a couple of easy wins to make it into yeah. this tournament. So that already in itself tells us that he's not in the worst of shape, obviously, coming here. But going up against Tilo, Tilo picked him out in Challenger for a reason. I think a lot of people have been picking on Nurture when it comes to being in Premier League, because Nurture is naturally just at that level where it seems like no matter how hard he practices, he can still make it Challenger, no matter what. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of the other players that just like, okay, Nurture, come play me. And that happens a lot. And this feels like a bit of an edge for Tilo like, mentally coming into this. Yeah, uh, on Nurture, uh, unfortunately, as you said, he kind of got picked on by a lot of the Protoss. And then the one time he finally got out of having to play a Protoss, it was against TLO, who feels really, really comfortable in Zerg versus Zerg right now. And you know, likewise here, I'd be worried a little bit for Nurture because TLO really hasn't dropped the ball in that regard when it comes to Zerg versus Zerg lately. Uh, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough. All right, the uh, game is almost ready. Final thoughts here, Roddy, before jumping into this? Yeah, TLO is a favorite also because he loves ZVZ. Z. But Nurcio still brings a lot of experience to the table, and even Nurcio on a bad day is still a good player. So I think it's going to be 2 1 either way, but yeah, if you would give me a free guess, then it'd be TLO. Quick score here, Claris. I've got 2 1 TLO as well, I think. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. It's time to head to the commentary team for this one to open up Group D. Hey guys, welcome back to the casting desk. We are about to hop into an amazing Zerg vs Zerg. The most random, unpredictable matchup where skill doesn't matter at all. <laughs> you think so? I don't know. I, I always feel like, you know, whoever masses the most amount of roaches should win. And that requires some skill. It requires mechanics. Oh yeah. Like you need to find making. R on the keyboard. Um, S and then R. Let's be real. Yeah. You gotta select this larvae first. And but beyond that, you know, Things can happen. You gotta get past the stage though, where uh, one misclick and all your zerglings die to a baneling, and the game's just over. Yeah, well, that's that's before you even get to the mass roaches. You know, you gotta survive that whole early game where everything is so volatile. The ling banes are uh, flying back and forth, and well, the starting map is gonna be bridgehead as well, which is gonna be a very entertaining opening ZVZ match. Ooh, a funky Zerg versus Zerg map. I do really like it. Obviously, Tilo would be tossing his head back and forth if you could hear me saying those things about Zerg versus Zerg. <laughs> Obviously, in jest, uh, he. We are going to see spawning here on the right-hand side of Bridgehead. It is Liquid's TLO. Certainly the favorite player in this one. He's playing fantastically recently. He has an admirable beard right now as well. Yeah. And here on the left side of Bridgehead, we do have the Red Zerg player. He is Nurture. Or Ilias, as TLO has decided to dub him in this game. A while since we've seen Nurcio uh, on the IEM stage, but uh, such a strong player. You know, he he's a part of history in StarCraft 2. One of the earliest players to abuse the Infester in Wings of Liberty to really make use of that unit and just make people sad. Yeah, you know, he certainly has a, a long history. It's uh, We haven't seen much of him recently, as they were saying on the panel. Like, he just hasn't had the results as you'd expect from someone like Nurcio compared to what he used to do, you know, a couple of years back which is kind of a bit of a surprise, but maybe took a step back, you know, just having a hard time keeping up with the uh, the young kids, the young guns. Yeah, he has been studying. Uh, he's very quick to tell us that whenever he does uh, lose a set here or there. <laughs> but yep. it, it is very hard to juggle that. Interestingly enough, Taylor going for that hatchery first. Meanwhile, Nurcio going for this 15 pool. Now, we were just talking to Taylor earlier about mm. his match against Bly in Challenger League, and he was talking about how he feels completely confident defending a 10 pool baneling mm -hmm. if he goes for that fast 14 pool after the hatchery. In this game, though, he's going for a he's going for a 16 pool by the looks of it. So it looks like he's just saying, I feel completely completely safe to be a little bit greedy here. Yeah. And I think that's a smart call against Nurcio. He's, in the past, a very predictable player in his Zerg vs Zerg openings. Yeah, uh, he's definitely uh, one of those safer players. He's much less likely to go for those early aggressions. He, he's always reminded me of that way too. He's been doing this for so long now. I remember when I, I got to play him like way back in BWC. I think it was 2013 or something. And yeah, he was still playing very similarly back then. You know, safety first, you know, get that early pool. Make sure you don't die to anything and just have a macro game from there. He has gone for a nicely timed, uh, relatively fast gas, considering it was a pool first build. However, Tilo has got that little gas lead. He's got a little bit more freedom with his opening. And he's going to have the advantage of both his first two queens popping at the same time, just having it a little bit smoother for his macro, and it mm. also makes it a little bit easier for him to suddenly explode into aggression due to those injects lining up. Yeah, he's going to be really trying to figure out exactly what Nurture has planned too. Uh, I'm sure TLA would be most comfortable just taking it to the Roaches. 
I haven't seen his ZVZ in a little while, though. I did miss the uh, him versus Bly. But if it's anything like it used to be, he's a big fan of just mass roaches and trying to get there. Uh, Nurtu is coming in for a scout now. Just going to check exactly what's going on. But I do want to talk a bit more about Bridgehead with you, Glade, because this map is just fantastic for multi prong sort of mid tier aggression play. I would say this is a map where you don't want to go in Festers. Uh, no. Do you feel like once those back rocks are down, like Tunneling Claw Roach is probably the, the best way to play here? Yeah, it certainly is, is probably one of the more preferred ways. I feel like this map has the same sort of properties as Expedition Lost does. You do have that back door once it's busted open. And if it is that mass roach versus mass roach, it, it becomes so difficult to defend all your bases. Uh, if you are the defender and there's, you're dealing with a lot of roach run buys, it gets uh, very complicated in the, uh, the mid to late game. Mm, one other style which has gained some popularity on here is upgraded Zerglings, but because it's difficult to actually force the back rocks down if you don't have roaches up, it can be defended if the other player gets wind. Interestingly enough, looking back at what we're actually seeing here, TLO has a bit of a supply lead here. Looks like he's getting just 10 Zerglings for safety along with that speed and going for a very fast lair and evolution mm. chamber. Yeah, so it looks like he will be planning for that roach style. Probably the, uh, the roach warren going to be coming down shortly. He wants to get that plus one ranged on the way as well. And probably add two more extractors during all this. Maybe fish for a third base. But uh, look what we're seeing from Nurture as well. Throwing it even more lings out here and four Banes on the way. Yeah, two, uh, these Banes already morphing in a nice forward position. This is going to give him a lot of uh, power with his attack. And, you know, TLO skipped on that uh, Baneling Nest, I believe. All the Zerglings are just pushing out across this map. We see TLO dropping a Spine reactively immediately. And wow, what a cute wall off. I've actually never seen someone wall off like this, but he really needs to buy time. Oh, yeah, this is actually beautiful. Look at this. There's no way these Banes are going to find a way in. The Lings are going to have to start to try and DPS down a Queen, and they might just do it because there's no transfusers available. Ooh, there's no follow-up for this. Nurtio is only committing to this oh. number of units. He has managed to break through that front queen. The other queen hiding in the gap there so it doesn't get focused down. Nurtio is looking for damage. He wants to kill something. Behind this, he's droning up and adding carapace, but he wants to kill a few drones here. Yeah, well, he's certainly going to create a, a huge distraction with TLO. You know, he's not mining gas anymore, which is a huge problem. Uh, especially because he's rushing the tier two. He wants to get roaches out. He wants to get roach speed out. Oh, look at that positioning from Nurtio. Just making sure that the TLO Zerglings have to filter through that little choke point. And Nurtio Zerglings getting a very nice trade there and really distracting TLO for a long time. What a cute little maneuver. Very cute. And, you know, we've seen nothing but roaches come out for TLO now. So I'm wondering if we are going to see a counter attack from him. Got to be a little careful though, a lot more Lings are now on the map looking to do more counter-attacking or even just running down the front door trying to cancel that third base. Mm, Nurtio is only just now starting that lair, starting that Roach Warren. His Carapace upgrade is getting really far along and oh, there's actually a gap in vision here. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, just moving a Queen or a Roach over there is going to stop that. But TLO doesn't realize it. He does have an Overlord popping out now. It is going to come into vision, but will TLO realize? Yes, almost instantly. Very, very quick awareness there. Well, the problem from this is, well, if it forces the Roaches back, he has an option to go to that third base and it's going to be take a lot longer for TLO to defend both sides if Lings are running back and forth. Mm. And you see these roaches turn back. and That's a nice maneuver, kind of threatening the aggression. It kind of forces Nurtio to do something right now. He can't just be working on those rocks. Yeah, well, here we go. Plus one just finished up, so he can't uh, two-shot these lings with roaches. It's going to help out a lot in cleaning this up, but he is losing a number of roaches as well. Mm, look at this. Very eager to get the pressure on TLO. Uh -oh. oh, and he's bringing two Sporkrolls. He might think he's actually up against Mutalisks here. This is the classic TLO Roach Push, where you start building Sporkrollers in your opponent's base. He has no idea, though. Nurtio is actually building Roaches of his own. So TLO has completely misread this situation. Well, he sees it now. He brings the drones back home. One thing to note as well is that plus one did finish so early for TLO that if he goes for a plus two pretty quickly, he's going to have a pretty huge advantage in upgrades. Oh, even more drones coming. Was this an accident? Was this maybe some uh, accidentally hotkeyed eggs? I think it certainly is now. Uh, you do not want to be sending drones towards someone massing roaches on three base. And the drone count's looking very even right now. 43 for Nurtio and 40 for TLO. TLO, though, still has this scary roach army. He is threatening here. Nurtio Zerglings looking for a counterattack, but as the roaches spill out, they just can't engage that with such a small number of Zerglings. Yeah, certainly so. And from here, he's going to open up that back door. And he's going to create just that, that problem that we were talking about earlier. It's like he's going to bounce back and forth until he has enough roaches and probably start trying to do roach run buys. Go for that uh, economy and just keep the uh, the momentum going there. Mm, 
It is now stabilizing into a Roach vs. Roach situation. Nurture Zerglings here giving him some very nice map mobility, and it's really forcing these drones off that efficient third base location. The Roaches are now having to come all the way back across the map to clean this up, and a total of four drones going down, and these Zerglings still being rampant in the main base. This is just such a pain in the butt for TLO, and we can see Nurture behind this. He's droning uninterruptedly, and he is starting to pull quite far ahead in that supply. Yeah, he is. He's, he's doing nothing but planning to be defending from here on out. You know, he's just sitting with a large number of roaches in that third base, droning it up while he's just creating such a distraction with these Zerglings. Trying to catch up in upgrades as well. Nearly that plus one completed. Wow, Nurture is actually droning really hard right now. Uh, he was at 62 and I saw 10 more drones on the production tab, I think. Uh, oh, no, not, not quite that many. Misread that. Uh, he's just going up to three base full saturation, though. He's going to be behind in the upgrades. I think that's TLO's main strength right now. He's, is he's got probably. plus two, plus one, and yeah. Nurture is only going to have plus one, one for the longest time. And that plus two upgrade is the most important upgrade when it comes to Roach Wars. It is the biggest game changer of all. Uh, it's where you really start to see one side of the Roach is being uh, heavily favored in these fights. And it's, I think TLO should be looking for it if, he, if he's kind of seen exactly how the upgrades have gone for Nurture as well, you know, starting with that plus one carapace off one evolution chamber. He's like, okay, I have a lot of time to work with plus two. So we see nothing but Roaches are being made now from both sides. It's going to be about TLO finding, you know, that engagement and trying not to fight into a concave. It's a tricky situation because he was a little bit down in supply, even though he does have that really nice upgrade timing coming. If he just commits into a, a, dis a position, if it's not a favorable one, even the upgrade advantage may not be enough if he attacks into a concave. Meanwhile, we start to see the tech diverge from both these players. We've got TLO going for the burrow, the burrow roaches we were talking about, but we're actually seeing hydralisks from Nurtio. Yeah, yeah, I do like this. You know, hydras are going to really even it up when you do have that deficit in upgrades. It's one way to kind of make up for the lack of DPS with those roaches. Is. All going to come down to positioning though, and we do see Tilo trying to make a run around here, looking for that concave at the third base, but Nurture was right on top of it. Mm, so far, it looks like both players are stuck in a little bit of a stalemate, but look at this. Each time Tilo moves up here, Nurture is feeling very stressed out, making sure he can't let Tilo get in there and get that angle, but. Nurcio maxed out, starting plus two carapace, looking to close in on that upgrade lead that TLO has. And in about a minute and a half's time, that's when Nurcio is going to feel really confident taking fights. Up until then, we see Nurcio adding a sixth gas, adding on that Hydra range and so on. Uh, so on. Meanwhile, TLO also adding a couple of Hydralisks. It looks like neither player wants to overcommit to being aggressive just yet. They both want to kind of tech up. Yeah. One thing to uh, to note as well is that Nurcio has got such a beautiful overlord spread onto the map and it's something that Tilo hasn't been able to deal with just yet now of going into the Hydra list but once that actually becomes uh, apparent on the map you know and he starts clearing all them out it gets so much harder to defend against all these uh, constant counter attacks from both sides the back door and the front door you're not exactly going to know where they are coming from Look at that ambush from Tilo. He's actually got about half of his burrow move roaches here. Burrowed, almost trying to make it look like his army is smaller than it is. So if Nurcio commits in, he can he can just kind of pop those up. Maybe even pop them up on the other side of the roaches. But look at this. Nurcio moving down here and actually realizing, oh, he doesn't want to get trapped between the spines and the roaches. He is going to pull back to his side of the map. Looks like both players playing very conservatively here. I'm very surprised no one's tried to really split up and go for some multi-prong aggression yet. Yeah, not just yet, just staying in these big balls, which is kind of interesting, but I guess, you know, with the addition of Hydras, it becomes a lot less, uh, a lot less of an army that you can split up and more of just this huge death ball that they want to try and clash with and have an advantageous sort of position. And Hydra range finishing up for Nurture now, maybe looking for the fight. Posturing here. Nurture has got a supply advantage from doing a very nice spore cancel trick. TLO attacking into the concave. This might be a disastrous decision. Nurture's army has got a, such a fantastic angle. TLO's army killing a lot, but is it enough here? There is a small upgrade. Uh, upgrade. Oh, upgrade parity actually. He was hitting just before plus two for Nurture, I believe. It looks like TLO might actually be breaking through. Yeah, it looks like it was because of those Hydra. The Hydra numbers were just so much higher for TLO in that fight, so he thought he could take it against. Uh, mostly Roach composition. He's going to wipe this out, but he's got to be so careful of the Remax that's going to be coming his way any second. Mm, he doesn't want to be losing these Hydralisks. Tilo needs to withdraw, needs to wait for his reinforcements before taking another engagement. Nurcio doesn't want to let him escape. He wants to grab these high-value targets, but he's trickling in only a few units at a time, and we can see Tilo's supply is just so far ahead here. Yeah, so far ahead, but look at the bank of Nurture right now. He should be making a lot more units. It seems like he's really stumbling on his lava production. And uh, he's behind oh, wow. now, but he still has that, uh, that bank lead and his 15 more roaches on the way as well as Hive.
Oh, those invisible macro mechanics coming into play here. Looks like Nurture just missed a couple more injects than TLO did. Uh, also, not having that macro hatchery down. He's only just putting it down now. So, oh, uh, there's still over a thousand minerals and almost 500 gas in the bag bank for Nurture. Nurture needs to be really careful here. Yeah, and he's kind of giving up his fourth base here. Maybe going for a counter attack or just not knowing exactly where the army of Telos is. He's going to be heading towards it, turning it back now. So he didn't. He just simply just did not know where this blue army was. Mm, Tilo's going to come home. He feels he has an advantage right now. He doesn't want to go into any sort of brash base trade situation where the army difference might not make as big a di uh, as big an advantage for him. And he's just going to take his time. Interestingly enough, that infested transition finally coming into play about 19 minutes. We've also seen Hive kick in for both players. Now, this is a really interesting uh, point. Nurtio loves those upgrades. He loves staying on Roach Hydra all game. And he's really good at orchestrating concaves there. We see 3-3 starting up for Nurtio now. And it looks like he has has zero plans to go infestors in this game. It seems so, which is kind of strange because I feel like if it gets to a point where TLO does add in the infestors, which he is now, uh, he starts to get much better fights from it because Fungal's just going to always displace the army and give a huge advantage to whoever gets them first. Oh, both players posturing here. These angles, these bridges, these choke points stopping each either player from taking an aggressive fight. But meanwhile, Tilo's hitting that bottom base. Roaches running in there, starting to get some drone kills. This is the sort of multi-prong action I would was, would have loved to see a bit earlier in this game. It's just so strong on this map. Look, no detection for Nurcio. Can't shut down those roaches just yet. And this is allowing Tilo to get position on the map while Nurcio is distracted. Yeah, I am surprised that we haven't seen it from both sides. And I mean, Tilo, he's the one with borrow movement. He could be doing this towards the north up here as well, as we see. A great opportunity there. Nothing really to stop them except one spine crawler. He's actually going to head towards it now with the main army. If he can get a good spread, a great concave up there, he should be able to take a very healthy fight. Oh, some of Nurtio's roaches are in position, but a lot of the army still isn't quite there. However, Tilo realizes fighting off creep into an army that's getting into a huge concave on creep, not a good idea. And he's once again going to go back into this position where he goes between the, the south, then back to the north. And Nurtio is constantly repositioning on the back foot. Yeah. Uh, maybe looking for the fourth base here, or maybe it looks like he's going to pick away at the third again. So we just see uh, Infestors finally coming out for Tilo. Maybe freeing up some supply here. He's got to be careful though. It's all about that concave and a little bridge makes it so hard for either side to engage. Oh, and a big Roach counterattack coming in for Nurcio. He's getting on top of the Infestors. TLO spots it and a very quick burrow to save them. Really nice reaction from TLO. Only one Infestor going down, but those Roaches are still a threat. Meanwhile, TLO has split off some Roaches at the bottom side. He's pulling back with his main army. Meanwhile, Nurcio, Killer Instinct, diving to the south side of the map. Yeah, diving to the south. And he's going to have a great uh, opportunity here to deal with the base because TLO is completely out of position. He does have four spine crawlers there. It's going to slow it down a little bit, but still, he's uh, quite the trek away. Oh, trying to suck energy with a Viper here. That could come into play a little bit later. Meanwhile, TLO's force is coming back on the outside, getting shredded by those Hydralisks. TLO's getting a bit disjointed here. Nurcio's multi-prong starting to make him fray at the edges a little bit. Oh, TLO needs to stay in control here. These roaches down the bottom. Oh, really disrupting Nurcio still. I think that's TLO's saving grace right now. Yeah, it's slowing down the economy just a little bit, but 3-3 is about to kick in for Nurcio, which is going to change these fights completely. Though we do see uh, Infestor's already out for Tilo, so if he does get the you know decent fungals, it's going to make up for that for sure, as well as his blinding clouds. Oh, fungal blinding cloud combo is huge. Nurcio actually building nine infestors, is infestors of his own right now, which could turn the tide. Keep in mind, Tilo took a lot more damage in the economy. He's down to 44 drones, mm. while Nurcio is still up in the 50s. Even though Tilo has that fourth base, it's nice and clean. This economy disadvantage means the next fight is so important. Tilo cannot afford to reproduce whatsoever. He has zero bank. Meanwhile, Nurture can be a little bit more cost inefficient. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to really just come down to the, the big fight there. I mean, oh. the, the bank for Nurture as well is, is not that big. He oh. can't afford to lose everything. Oh, very nice fungal there for Nurture. Taking out a little clump of roaches, setting up a nice position. Tilo going for a very aggressive fungal blinding cloud. It looks good, but he just doesn't have the roach hydra here to back it up, getting ahead of himself. Well, good fight so far, but still, Fungals remain for TLA, so 
Nurture cannot go too far in there. He could take some heavy losses for uh, not really oh. much of a trade. TLO does not realize how many Infestors there are for Nurture. They've all just joined the battle. That is nine Infestors, each with a Fungal. And look at this. Nurture is diving down here. TLO is not in position if... Oh, Nurture doesn't dive for it. He's going to split his army up and go for two sides at once. Yeah, I, I like this a lot more, actually. You can pull back with this one, get a better Concave at the top here, and just you know, connect the armies up there, and he should be so far ahead. He's gonna, he's pretty much claimed this base now. No way TLO can defend it. Nurcio, so good with this 3-3. Roach Hydra, now the Infestors. He's just so good with this positioning. He's bullying TLO around. He's cut off the fourth base. He's withdrawing with those Hydralisks, realizing he actually forgot Hydralisk speed now. He is adding that on, and he's coming back with these Infestors. He wants to catch TLO's army, and he does with a beautiful fungal growth. Yeah, catching out a lot of it. He's looking for the, oh. to wipe it all out, but this is just way too much damage. Teela cannot afford to make any more army. He's, his economy is so low at this point, losing that fourth base. He's going to try one last time. He gets a decent fungal, decent concave. A lot of those hydras are at the front there. Oh, so many infested Terrans coming out for Nurcio here. He's just got so many roaches and hydras here. Beautiful chain fungals from TLO using what few units he has in the most elite manner possible. But is it enough to actually crush through? Because he has no economy left on his fourth base behind this. His fourth base is completely dead. Meanwhile, Nurcio has a strong, solid economy. Nurcio is resupplying. This is TLO's last force. He's only building six roaches at a time. Well, look at the supply lead as well for Nurture. That speaks a lot, especially in a mirror match like this, when they have the exact same units. And, I mean, Nurture also has 3-3. Three, three. Tilo working on plus 3 now, but miles behind, and here we go again. GG. Tilo tries to do a sort of spider situation at the end with that Roach Hydra Force. The Infested is actually looking really impressive, but... It just goes back to when he got pulled out of position a bit too much, took a bit too much economy damage, and I, I really do think TLO investing in that Burrow move, that Burrow Riches, did miss an opportunity to get some multi-prong going, to start limiting the economy of Nurcio earlier, and I think if he did that, if he kept Nurcio back a little bit, I, I just feel like the tempo would have been going his way a little bit more. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, what most Zergs would do in that kind of style, we see that all the time in the career, like Roach vs. Roach, it all comes down to the counter-attacking and, and economic damage, so it happened just a little too late in that game for TLO. I have to agree. Let's see if he can bring it back. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back with Game 2. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Season X here at Gamescom. 
We are witnessing a very cool Zerg versus Zerg between two legends of the StarCraft 2 scene, Nurchio and TLO. Nurchio sneaking that game away, looking uh, very yeah. commanding with his positioning there on Bridgehead. Yeah, he, he was kind of on the back foot for a lot of the game, but and when it came to it, he, he stuck with the, the upgrades. He got that huge advantage, and then TLO just really out of position for that uh, defending the, the natural and got yeah. behind in a base, just maneuvering the armies. Nurchio seemed much more uh, comfortable with it. Yeah, Nurture actually is one of these players where it's kind of funny because he has his own way of, of looking at the game. That that two two Roach Hydra is just so it's something where like no one not many people do it anymore. You throw it out as a sneaky timing, Nurture is just like, yeah, I just go Roach Hydra, I get two two, I go to hive for three three, mm -hmm. I don't even think about infestors. Just such a unique style. It's really, really cool. But uh is it gonna work once again? Against this guy over here, spawning on the right hand side of Coda. It is Team Liquids, TLO. to uh, get back on top in this series. TLO's, in recent history, has done very well against Nurtio. I'm sure he's a little bit annoyed at himself for letting that game slip away. Yep, uh, well, over here on the left, it is Nurtio from Team Acer. Nurtio don't care what no one think. He, he don't just, care no at all. He just plays his own game, He man. just plays Roach Hydra and goes to 3-3, and he's happy with that. Uh, I did like how he, he approached the game, though. You know, I liked his uh, Ling Bane aggression. It really kept Tilo on the defensive for a long time. He traded things out. He got his third base up and running a lot earlier and had a much healthier economy going into that mid game. Tilo never really found a window for his early roaches. Yeah. We have to remember as well, Tilo had uh, quite a nice opening in that last game, but it was a really weird opening. To be honest, it only made sense if you know your opponent and you, th you have a read into how they're playing, mm. because he went for Zergling speed, but then he still went for a Lair and a Roach Warrant at the same time as you would with like that sort of Snoot build, which is like a semi-gasless opening. Uh -huh. So it felt like he was investing in kind of two divergent paths and like the Ling speed kind of helps, but not that much. It just felt a little bit of an odd choice. And I think he might have done it because he knows Nurture loves to do this like really light Ling Bane pressure. Yeah, I get that, that impression too. I mean, if you can jump on top of that with your Lings early enough, stop the Banes from morphing, stop them getting to your base like it did. Uh, it gets uh, quite advantageous because you haven't invested in a bailing nest. You've used that gas for a much better reason. Do you think the mistake, or if we could call it that, it wasn't a, a huge deficit from this, but do you think Tilo not scouting the, the banelings morphing outside of his base and then running all the way across the map with his zerglings before realizing? Do you think that was a bit of a, a mess up from him? For TLA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. He wasn't really paying attention, wasn't really checking the map for those uh, those proxy banes. But he did have such a fantastic base layout anyway, so it didn't really matter. He lost the queen for it, but he didn't really t lose, lose too much of an economy. Similar openings this game as well, by the way. Yeah, some uh, nice uh, safe opening once again from Nurchio. Still going for that well-timed gas. He's going to be just about 20 gas behind TLO. So TLO will have that slight edge in the uh, kind of options in the early game, but it is only very slight. And of course, because Nurchio he saw a hatchery first, his overlord went right into TLO's main, checked the gas timing, he knows exactly what he's up against, whereas TLO on the other side, his overlord's dived in, but I don't think it actually had a chance to check the gas of, uh, of Nurchio just yet. Yeah, one of those advantages you have for going for a pool first as well, you know, the queen gets out a little bit earlier, it gets a little bit harder for the overlords to get a comfortable scout out. So he doesn't know for sure what's going on, mm. but uh, Funker probably actually, has a fair idea. Funker actually had some great observing there, uh, listening to what we're saying as always. Ooh, nice TLO micro there, getting the upper hand of that link fight. Uh, as I was saying, uh, you know, the Overlord did spot the gas early, and I would actually call that maybe a mistake from Nurture taking that gas, because the Overlord on the normal path checks the, the natural hatchery. Mm. And then it can actually always, even against the pool first, poke in and check that top gas on that's its way true. to the rear. Yeah. So Nurture uh, did give away that little bit of information, but that's not huge hugely game-changing. It just gave TLO the knowledge early on to know what he's playing against. And we do see bailing nests for both players this this game. Yeah, so it looks like TLO might be wanting to apply the aggression, or at least have the ability to defend anything that Nurture is going to throw at him. And it does make sense because the ramp is a lot wider this time around. It's a lot harder to defend against all this kind of aggression. Uh, it's either you're going to have a bailing nest, you're going to have a SimCity, or a Spinecrawler with a cup of queens. Mm -hmm. Chooses the bailing nest. 
I think it's a really solid way to defend. An interesting choice from Tilo, adding two more Overlords to go up to uh, 60 supply uh, so early on in the game. Maybe just a little bit of a misclick there. Uh, does, doesn't show really any inclination of what he wants to do this game. All he's doing is droning hard and getting out some Zerglings for safety so far. Well, here is the Zerglings once again from Nurture. So it looks like he is planning to uh, apply the pressure, or at least maybe got a little bit spooked by those Lings coming across the map from TLO's base. Oh. Six of them are, so nothing too much. Both of them just looking to skirmish really it's light. It's not going to be a good hope here. Oh, oh, bad trade for TLO. Great one for Nurgio. The Baneling finishing just in time to destroy those Zerglings. Oh, this Baneling! Very <laughs> nice hit on the high ground. Giving some back here. Uh, I don't think either of them are going to plan to go too all in behind this. We do see a couple more Lings being added, a few oh. more Banelings, but nothing too heavy. Well, I think Nurgio might feel pressured to make something happen here because TLO has gone for that fast third base and Nurgio has spotted it. Interestingly, TLO's following this up with a fast Roach Warren to sort of anchor his defense, but first of all, he needs to micro this Ling Bane really well. The Zerglings splitting up to attack those Banelings individually. Oh, very nice micro from TLO so far, but he just doesn't have a lot of units here. He's got more Zerglings on the way now, but there's a big train of Zerglings coming across the map for Nurgio. I think TLO's defending this with such a small number of units that his micro needs to be perfect here. Yeah, he's got to get the Baneling hits at least for now. 12 more links coming out and a couple more Banes have just finished up here. I do like the Carapace on the way for Nurture as well. If he can last that long, get that up, it's going to give him such an advantage in these Ling Bane fights. And this is all about micro. It is all about the skill, the speed of these players right now. Look at this. Nurture is morphing Banelings to open up space. He ran around the third base to pull TLO's Zerglings back. He's splitting up TLO's attention. This is a really hard fight for both players. Who can micro better? TLO's oh. Baneling hits getting very nice explosions on Nurture's Zerglings. He's hanging on for now. Eight Roaches are about to pop out as well. That's going to really solidify the defense for TLO and Nurture. He's going to kind of run out of options at this point. He's going to probably try a transition from here, but he is miles behind when it comes to economy and oh, production. wow. Look at this. Roach is focusing down the Banelings. TLO completely denying this. And TLO, look at this. He's already got his next plan ready. He's getting Burrow. It's almost halfway done. His plan is to go and deny Nurchio's third base as soon as he holds this off by burrowing a Zergling underneath it. But Nurchio's already taking that third hatchery. TLO, though, he's building a lot of Zerglings. He can go across, do a Roach Bane counterattack. And what does Nurchio have behind this? He's got two mineral lines saturated. He's got some Zerglings and Banelings, but no lair, no Roach Warren. All he can do is mass Zergling Baneling here. Yeah, and to defend against Roach Bane, it's, it's never really something that's going to happen unless you do have the numbers, you do somehow deal with the Roaches and get the Baneling hits you need. Such a hard fight. I think TLO might just checkmate it from here because there's nothing really that Nurture can do. This isn't even an all-in, but oh, the beautiful Baneling hit from TLO. Two Banelings take out six ones of Nurture's. His Roaches all still standing. More Zerglings coming in, more Banelings for TLO. Nurture doing a great defense with these Banelings, but it is so cost inefficient right now. <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, those Roaches these. just healing up. TLO being so fancy here. This is just beautiful, typical TLO. This is not even an all-in. TLO can drone up his third behind us oh. at any moment. He does get the huge hit on all those links, so they all are on one HP because of that carapace upgrade, but uh, it's going to be hard to defend. You know, these Burrow Roaches can last for days, just keep doing this all day long. <laughs> TLO's having so much fun right now. You can see on the, that bottom shot, he looks very focused, but I know he is enjoying this. This is where TLO thrives when he has units to micro, to play with like this, and they are being so cost efficient. Takes out both queens. He is now unburrowed, killing so many of these Zerglings, and there is a constant stream of units reinforcing here. Yeah, got to be a little careful here. Don't want to overcommit too much. He's waiting for Banelings. Plus one Carapace is active for Nurture, so it's going to help out a lot against the Banelings, a lot against the Zerglings. And here we go again. Banelings about to finish up, and that is a lot of Roachling coming across the map. Nurture is defending so damn well, but he just doesn't have the tools to keep this going. Zergling Baneling against Roach Baneling, it's never going to be cost efficient, and with no follow-up, he is forced out of that game. GG. Nice win from TLO there. Tying things up. Very exciting games these two have. I feel like TLO has uh, a bit of a line into the way Nurture is thinking. The way he played that game, I feel like he looked so calm and measured with everything he did. And such a, a slightly different take on how to do that fast third build. Going for the fast Roach Warren with it, normally you'd say, well, why don't you just keep defending with Banelings? They're going to hold on, they'll be great. Maybe add an extra queen or two. But you could tell TLO said, look, there's a good chance he overcommits to this aggression. Mm -hmm. Not only will the Roaches keep me safe defensively, but then I can counterattack super hard with a Roach Baneling. And it just uh, it was the weak point in Nurture's build. Yeah. I, I love that uh, Burrow edition as well, you know, prolonged those Roaches' lives for, and created a very cost-efficient fight for the longest time. Uh, he certainly was a lot more successful than Game 1. He kind of uh, he understands how Nurture is playing this. He makes the bailing this that time around, which I think is a much better idea. 
And going, you know, just winning it early on. I'd like to see this third game go the distance again, though, and really test their skills. And with Terraform being the map, I think it could definitely go that way. Mm, Terraform's an interesting map because it is quite a short rush distance. This is one of the favorites for those early pool shenanigans. Mm. When we look at these players, we think, Tielo, does he like to gamble in the deciding match? No, not at all. Nurcio, does he like to gamble ever in Zerg versus Zerg? His, one, his favorite matchup? Mm -hmm. Not really. Certainly not. But that makes it the perfect decision for either of these players. Uh, if either of them then decides, you know what, I, I think it could really work. I think for Nurcio, it's a great decision. Then again, on the other hand, for TLO, we, he's seen pool first two games in a row. Probably not a good idea to go early pool here. No, I, I, I think one player just plays too safe. The other one probably doesn't want to risk it all in game number three. I, that's the way it looks. And I think we're just going to see another pretty, pretty big macro game. Maybe we'll see some more early aggression, but uh, I feel like this one's going to go the distance. Nurture no, looking very focused there. As we hop into game here on Terraform. He's going to have to get through this guy representing the blue unicorn. It is Liquid's TLO. And up here in the top left of Terraform, we do have the red Zerg player. He is Aces Nurcio. Looking calm, looking focused. Yep. Not often do you see Arda look uh, look nervous when he's up there playing. He's been up there so many times before. Very experienced player, been around pretty much since the start. Yeah, and he's always had that great DVZ, certainly his best matchup. Both players going for a 9 Overlord. None of those cheesy shenanigans. Looks like both these players want to be uh, pushing this game on a little bit further. In terms of the paths across this map, there's a lot of narrow choked up sort of areas. Uh, I guess, personally, I feel like it's definitely a map where you can go towards maybe Infestors. I think Roach Hydra is just fine. What about Mutalisks on this map? We haven't seen it from either of these players yet, but do you mm. feel like it's a decent option here? That's hard to say. It would make sense because of how ex how like far away those third bases are too. You know, It's going to be a lot harder to spread creep there and defend it against Mutas or Lings. You could see it go that route. I, I think TLA would be more likely the one to do it than Nurture. I feel like Nurture is going to do a lot more of the same of what he has been doing, you know, 15 pull as we see, probably go into a, you know, a later Roach build after some Ling Bane aggression, lightly. He seems to do that every game, doesn't every he? Every single that game so far. Ling Bane aggression. All right, so you're going up against the guy, you know he's going to do Ling Bane aggression. Right now you're playing Nurture, you're in TLO's shoes. What do you think is, is, is a great way to deal with it? We've already seen him kind of just deal with it uh, with a, a couple of speedlings into a fast roach build. We've seen him deal with it with a fast third, uh, with Ling Bane defense into roaches. Do you think just repeating one of those openings is a good idea here? Yeah, I do like the Ling Bane, to be honest, uh, on this map especially, considering how hard it would be to get a third base if Tilo wants to go that route. Uh, open up with that, you know, the same sort of layout in terms of natural as well. It's pretty yep. wide open. You're not going to just block it off with buildings and a queen as easily as he did in the first map. Maybe that route, but... Uh, that would be a good option. I think, yeah, that, it would make a lot more sense that way too. I would like to see Mutalisks. Mm, actually, you're going for four Zerglings and actually delaying his queen by about 12 seconds here to get those out. So these Zerglings are a bit faster than you'd normally expect. Now, the reason I, I see this as a strange move is TLO's Overlord is going to spot those, leaving the base right now. Those Lings are just heading across the map. And because TLO's seen that, we are going to see him build some Zerglings of his own immediately. Now, looks like he is going to build four Zerglings. Good. I was about to say, you don't want to underestimate this sort of pressure. You're mm. already building those Zerglings later than your opponent. If you only build two because your queens are so late, they might get out of control, pick off a drone, waste a bit of mining time. But it looks like TLO is taking this very seriously, even building six Zerglings of his own. Just making sure he can win it. Or maybe just scouting with two and then four going to help out defending. Not going to commit any drones to that natural either, so... Very oh. smartly done from TLO. Yeah, very nice defense here. Really good micro, actually. Not not even losing a single Zergling just yet and taking down one of Nurture's. Meanwhile, these two Zerglings going across. TLO wants to know what's going on back here because right now TLO doesn't have very much information. The fast queen being out has denied his scouting. All he knows is there's a fast natural expansion. So there do have to be some options running through TLO's brain. And to be safe against those, he's dropped that very fast Baneling Nest. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. He's going to get a good scout off here. He's going to see the main base. The queens aren't going to you know, stop them from getting everything. And he sees the bailing nest as well, the timing of it, the gas mined. 
everything he'd ever want to scout, so he mm. feels pretty comfortable at this point. Yeah, seeing no real signs of crazy aggression, not a lot of lava there, mostly Ooh, drones, not cancels. many zerglings. And, oh, that's a really cool maneuver from Nurture. I like to see that change up. Cancelling the Baneling Ness, it means if Taylo decided to hit a big Ling Bane aggression here, Nurture would probably just die. <laughs> yeah, he would, and well, let's see what exactly Taylo wants to do. The spine suggests that no, he yeah. wants to play this nice and safe and take it a little bit later. So I think this option will be fantastic for Nurture. He'll be able to get that carapace again, which he's, sh he's shown that he loves that. He's shown he's great at using those Zerglings. We are going to see that start up in just a second. And meanwhile, Tilo looks like he's going to go for, I believe, a fast third option, or maybe just straight up to two base Roach here. Oh. Yeah, I think it would have to be at least a pretty fast Roaches. I'm sure we're going to see a Lair start up in just a moment's time as well. He's committing to that very early plus one. Mm, maybe going for the fast third again, TLO, just with the spine as a bit of an anchor for safety in this deciding game. Of course, keep in mind, this is uh, a very important match. Ooh, <laughs> it looks like the Banelings here. There's so many hedges on this map, but Nurture has his overlords placed well, so he does have vision over those. Isn't going to run into those Banelings by accident. TLO looking to get a bit of map presence here. Quite a lot of Zerglings from Nurture, so oh. we can see he's forcing TLO into a defensive posture. This Baneling! Oh. oh! Beautiful split off from Nurture, activating that Baneling, and he's going to get the cancel on this third base. Yeah, very easily. Uh, but look at this, a counterattack from TLO. Going to at least stop the mining for now. It's going to, I think it kind of evens up the damage, oh, but no cancel. All no right. cancel on the third. Out position. Nurture is looking fantastic in this game. Bit of a blunder there. More and more Lings are on the way as well. We are seeing a Roach Warren come up for Nurture. Interestingly, Nurture is actually going for that really fast plus one range. Ooh, nice hit there for Tilo. But Tilo is committing a lot to this aggression. He really needs to get something done here. It looks like he's just going to run straight past this spine crawler, trying to get the, the spine. Oh! oh, not paying attention, but not really fighting the drone hits either. Oh, trying yeah. to follow up with these lings. He could actually do some serious damage here. Oh, Nurture is being a little bit greedy, but those queens are so well positioned that Tilo is not getting the damage that he really wants here. He is making the natural evacuate. There is a lot of lost mining time, but because TLO doesn't have a third base here, because he's been so delayed, he does need to get a bit more damage done. Yeah, he's really committing a lot to this. Now that with Roach is out, I don't think he's going to find much more. Only 11 drones have saturated this natural, by the way, so he's got a little catching up to do there mm. if he wants to commit to it. But with plus one finishing up, maybe he's going to just try and drop the hammer, try and end the game right here. Yeah, you got to keep in mind, sure, TLO's up eight drones, but Nurture has a good sized squad of plus one roaches there but he doesn't want to be aggressive just yet Taylor has a lot of zerglings on the map he's going to threaten the counter attack with them he doesn't want to fight these roaches front on but he has mobility if he can buy time he can add some drones of his own get some economy up get the plus one started get the roach speed started the real problem for Taylor right now is that evo chamber is only halfway done so he is just so far behind on those roach upgrades yeah it's kind of incredible it's kind of the reverse as well of game number one if, if nurture stays on top of his upgrades he should have a huge advantage if it gets to that oh, stage of Roach vs. Roach. Huge speedling run in the Roach is completely out of position. Very nice pocket trick from Nurture, keeping most of those drones alive. Good hold position from TLO, but Nurture with very good micro, only losing two drones so far. TLO needs to focus fire here, gets four drones, pulls the Roaches back, wastes some mining time. It's a decent pickup, but Nurture's reaction really minimized the damage there. Yeah, not much damage. Not, not really crippling damage at all. He lost so many links for that, which means he's lost a lot of counter attack potential as, as well as map control in general and oh. he could have you know maybe even dealt with a third base because that third base at the same time is building for Nurture. Oh, we could uh, check out the worker tab there really curious to see where these players uh, are sitting 40 to 43 workers so it looks like Tilo still has that slight edge he does have a slightly faster third base as well and he is starting to add the double upgrades he knows he's very far behind in those though so really Tilo's game plan from here has to be defensive meanwhile Nurture on the other side of things has a very very good plus two timing ahead of him he's adding mm -hmm. a second evolution chamber he's starting to drone up his third base I think Nurture feels a lot less afraid here Knowing he has this ball of roaches up, he knows he has the scarier front-on army right now. With the addition as well as a, uh, so a couple of overseers, I think he will be fishing for those contaminates at a pretty key time to really help out with this plus two timing. A very saturated third base already, so from here all he really has to do is focus on making those roaches and plan for this big attack. The Overseer saving its Overlord uh, pre-existing function. TLO rushing into the natural with roaches and lings? 
going for a suicide run here. Wow. Looks like he's just going to try and kill some drones. Well, uh, you can certainly focus down a lot of these drones. The roaches for nurture are still slow, so they're going to take some catching up. Let's see how many he can get down. He's not focus firing properly. He kills a queen and a roach, but hmm. after that, oh, I mean, he has the faster roach speed. No, he doesn't. He's just getting cornered here. A little bit of good scouting information, but a bit of an odd move. Very TLO-esque to just kind of dart in like this. And more roaches are rallying across the map. This is so weird. Yeah, I guess he got the queen. It's going to slow down production. Four roaches in the future there. But was it worth, like, eight roaches going down for that? I don't think so, because the threat of a plus two timing is very real right now. For Nurtio, if he wants to go for it. And I think he just might do that. Yeah, I mean, TLO's plus two is just starting. That's 190 seconds until he has that most important of upgrades. He is adding a lot of roaches. Meanwhile, both players right around 60 drones. Nurture looking like he just wants to go double upgrades into six gas uh, or five gas roach hydralisk. Meanwhile, TLO looking like he just wants to kind of hang on, get up to his uh, nice drone count, add more roaches. Doesn't really seem to have too much of a, a game plan past here. And I think that's the correct response because he knows his army is not as frightening right now. Yeah, I think the threat of a counter-attack on the map could really help out, at least buy him more time. You know, keep moving, keep Nurtu on the defensive while, uh, you know, Nurtu has this sick advantage in terms of upgrades. But uh, Nurtu can kind of happy just staying at home, but building a Roach Hydra army. He doesn't really want to press it at all. Great scouting from TLO. Looks like he's identified that Hydralisks are probably the option here. He is dropping that Baneling Nest. He's going to be going for Baneling speed, just Roach Baneling, which is such a great counter to this Roach Hydra army. Now, if Nurture realizes this, then... Actually, you know, Taylor already had a Baneling Nest from earlier on. I think he's just realized it himself. So he's just canceled the other Baneling Nest. He started Baneling speed up. Uh, that's good. He did realize that. Save himself a bit of money. Now, um, Nurtio, if he realizes this, he doesn't want to get too many Hydralisks, right? If he gets over, say, 10 Hydralisks, they're just going to be fodder for those Banelings. Mm. Well, at the same time, if he does actually realize that it's going to be Banelings for TLO, he can add Banelings of his own. Really creates a big problem uh, when it comes to the mat, uh, the big encounter. If he gets the bailing hits on top of TLO's bailings, then TLO loses all his DPS and mm. it's going to be such a huge uh, compositional advantage oh. for Nurtio. TLO sending a big roach counter attack on the north of the map, but Nurtio is already getting very close to being on top of him. TLO needs to send that roach counter in right now to buy time. He's, he's making his frontal army so much smaller and he's already down 30 army supply. He's got 26 Zerglings. They're trying to morph into Banelings. He doesn't quite have the gas for it yet. This is such a scary oh. moment. Oh, Nurture is giving him time as well. This is a huge problem. He's going to go into the natural. He has a sweet concave. Bailings are finishing up there. Oh, TLO. Some of his roaches are a little bit on move command there. The Banelings coming in. They are forcing Nurture to readjust. Meanwhile, TLO has still that squad of roaches just sitting at the top oh. of the map doing nothing. Oh, looks like TLO is going to hold on here. Those Banelings forming in just the nick of time. Yeah, very nicely done there. And Nurture not even planning to try and exchange, just trying to run away, which is an interesting sort of way to do it because TLO is still chasing and those Hydras are slow. Oh, the Baneling speed has kicked in. The Roaches want to get on top of this army. They want to kill those high value Hydralisk targets. The Banelings mainly hitting Roaches, but they did get some decent hits. TLO, though, is going to pull back now. He's cleared up the Roaches at his third base, got his drones back on mining, and he is in a nice supply, supply lead right now. Yeah, decent supply lead. Uh, really. Kind of a miss micro with those Banelings hitting all the roaches, not really trying to hit, uh, hit the Hydras at the back here. And still a pretty scary army for nature, especially if there's no Banelings involved. These roaches got to be a little bit careful when they try and engage. Oh, TLO looks hungry. Looks like he wants to poke forward, seeing the creep, seeing the spread of Roach Hydra does back off for now. He's adding his own plus two carapace. He's adding another round of Zerglings to morph into Banelings. Now we have to keep in mind, these Zerglings, these Banelings in the composition, they're not cost efficient over a long periods of time. Against large numbers of roaches, or if infestors are added, they do get worse and worse. So TLO's very hungry to get out here to push his tech advantage right now in the composition, crush through Nurture and really use that advantage. Yeah, Nurture also already has an uh, infestation pit. Now he is making his first infester. Doesn't look like TLA is going to push it any further despite making a, a number of links. He's going to morph Banelings back at home. All Nurture has to do from here is wait. He just has to set up his fourth base, get that gold, and just absorb the army that comes at him. Oh, you know, knowing TLO, he has some pretty well-optimized hotkeys. And I've just seen Overlord drop start up. So <laughs> I, I feel like he actually might be meaning to get that upgrade right now. I really hope so. Wow. I hope that's not just a misclick. Yeah, he's going to need Overlord speed eventually as well if he wants to make use of them. But, uh, you know, Fungal's still going to have that same effect, I feel, if they're on point. Ooh. Interesting sort of idea there. TLO splitting up. Looks like he wants to run some units into that third base while killing the fourth. Well, looks like he's going to do that. He's looking for that run by, but 
Nurture is raiding currently. Oh, a couple of Banelings running into the hatchery. Not the best trade so far. TLO coming in with this huge spread from all angles. But defensive Banelings are in the mix for Nurture now. This spread at the top is really good for Nurture. Looks like Nurture is holding on here so far. The Banelings are starting to crash in from the northern side. TLO is getting so aggressive here. He is oh, going into okay. this defensive concave, but he just has so many units. Is it enough? I think it might just be enough to stop this, but more Roaches and, and Hydras coming from the south after defending that army. And and the Remax is going to happen in just a second from Nurture. He is so yeah. far ahead in supply. Mm, that positioning from Nurture is just fantastic. Those defensive Banelings shut everything down. And TLO really had all of his Banelings concentrated on one side of the army. And guess what? The Hydralisks weren't there. It was mainly just Roaches he and a couple of defensive Banelings. into nothing but Roaches at the front. It was, a, it was a huge mistake once again. Just a little bit out of position with everything. Mm. He's going to pay for it with his fourth base as well. Oh, Hydras are out for TLO, but he's just so far away from Max right now. Hydras need a lot of meat in front of them to be effective. Very smart move to buy time with these roaches, but he does not want to throw them away. If he dives too deep, he will get cornered. There we go. Seeing he's forced Nurcio's army Sandwich. back. Oh, no. Beautiful maneuver from Nurcio. He's going to trap every single one of these roaches. Oh, man. Yeah, so long as he starts to shoot moving, he should be able to wipe just about nearly every single one of them or just completely block them off, I guess. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Wow, that is a brutal trade. Look at the, look at Nurcio's bank. He's he's maxed with 1,500 minerals in the bank. TLO has nothing. He's only at 137 supply. We can see on his face the frustration, realizing that he's in an almost helpless position. He's starting to upgrade Burrow because he's thinking, how can I possibly win this game? Maybe I borrow <laughs> some Banelings and well, like the Hydras run on it. I don't know, man. Some sort of miracle is certainly in order here. And from here, I, I, it's it's kind of a huge question. What can you do? Down six is supply, no bank, down a base. Uh, the composition is inferior. Everything is against him right now, and slow overlord drops are the answer. <laughs> He's starting Pneumatize ca uh, Carapace right now, that overlord speed upgrade. Uh, but it looks like he actually is aware that he's upgraded these overlords. He's going to try and drop some Banelings. Uh, meanwhile, Nurture is starting his own drop upgrade, which uh, i got to say is, is most probably a misclick here, uh, unless he does really want to show off right now. Uh, I don't think so. I think that has to be a misclick at this point. I mean, he's got 3-3. Three, three. Roach, Hydra, and Fester now, soon to be. And that's going to be such a scary army to deal with. And Tilo does not have an answer for it. Mm, Tilo's getting back up in supply. He is rebuilding a fourth base. If he can max out and just get a really good concave, it is still possible to fight off this army. Keep in mind, there's only about two Infestors in there for Nurture. So in terms of the tech, yeah, there'll be an upgrade advantage, but positioning is always the most important factor with these sort of armies. Oh, here we go. Oh. He's going to go for the bean drops. He knows it's there too. Is he going to go for the fungal on it? Slow it down. Oh, the Baneling <laughs> drops are actually massive right now. What? Those roaches just took so much damage. TLO doing the craziest move we have seen in a Premier League tournament for the longest time. This is an absolutely crazy push there from TLO. Nurcio pulling back. He's trying to remax. So much of Nurcio's bank is gone, and TLO's only behind about 10 supply. He's only, yeah, a little bit behind here. The remax is coming in there in a big way, and he's expelled most of his Banelings in the over. Overlords. I think oh. Nurture might have been in disbelief. He's like, all right, you have overlords, but they're actually full of bailings. What? <laughs> no spreading on his units. Of course, he was trapped in quite a choked up area, but that was really huge. And uh, it did a lot of damage, but Tilo has a bit further to go before he can really equalize this game. Tilo does not have a hive. He does not have 3-3. Three, three. Nurture has plus three attack. Plus three carapace is soon to finish. Oh, Tilo even losing a few overlords. He cannot spare these minerals right now. And he is starting Burrow once more. Looks like he canceled that earlier on. Well, here we go. He's going to... Nurture's going to look to try and end this once again. There's about eight bailings in those overlords, which can still do some sickening damage to a big clump of oh, units. Oh, Nurture's starting to split up. Looks like he wants to dive for the fourth base while this army distracts. And TLO really just wants to get on top of this army. He wants to fight in one concentrated area where he can use the overlord drops drops to their maximum potential. But he's being lured out on the map right now. And Nurture is counterattacking. TLO is realizing he is so far behind. He cannot pull back and give Nurture more time. He has to push across the map and finish this right now. Oh, if he killed the destructible rocks, that would be such a great move, but it looks like he's just going to use it as a funnel instead, and actually TLO taking care of it, slowing things down here, and oh. it's giving this counterattack a lot of time to do the damage it needs to. Oh, Baneling run by, killing a lot of drones down there, but really, is that enough? TLO needs to get in here, he needs to kill this army right here, right now. Oh. The Baneling drops massive on those Hydralisks, but the fungal growths are choking up TLO's army. Still great, uh, great damage done to that army. It's going to force Nurture back. It's going to force him to give up the gold base. 
Uh, still that Remax, that bank that he had, once again, going to give him such a huge supply advantage. TLO loading up another Baneling drop in the middle of the fight. Oh. Doesn't get to drop a single Baneling before the Hydra's blasted down. TLO is on his last legs here. His third is down. His economy is in tatters, and he does have to type GG. Great game there. Great play from Nurture. Just really solid mechanics. Did what he had to do, and uh, interesting sort of way for TLO to try come back with that Overlord drops with Banelings. Worked the first time, but uh, just not enough money behind it to keep it going. Yeah, I think the big misstep that game on TLO's part, where uh, I think the game was very even, up to the point where he went for that big three-pronged attack on that third base. Nurture's defensive positioning was impeccable. He, I don't know if it was on purpose or just through fate, but all of his Hydralisks ended up on the side away from the Banelings. He had the spread out perfectly, so he was maintaining three separate concaves. It was just a, a beautiful defense that he orchestrated. Yeah, he plays a very smart, safe game there. And we saw it pretty much in all three games. He, he knows kind of what he has to do to, to survive to the, the point where he really shines, which is the Master yeah. Roach Hydra style. He's just so good at finding those nice engagements. Like, Nurture is just so patient. Uh, I, I could kind of see TLO getting a little bit over-eager in some mm. situations that game. I think Nurture looked uh, a little bit more relaxed overall, even when he was a bit behind. Uh, yeah, he yeah. kind of was like, oh, if I just keep doing my thing. Like, it, it felt like Nurture was playing his game, and TLO was maybe feeling a bit more pressured to force things to happen. It seemed that way. Maybe less confident in the late game where Nurture yeah. just wants to be. It's like, it's like okay, i got to try and do the damage early on, but Nurture, mm. every single game, just playing safe, you know, going for pool first, not trying to yeah. risk anything. It's it's kind of cool when you see that, right? Because you look at Korean Zerg versus Zerg at the top level, and it's almost every player is like, I'm going to play either hatch gas pool or early pool. You kind of go through these extremes. Then you find a player like Nurcio, and he's kind of the equivalent of, I guess, what you'd call like a soul key in the Korean team. They're just like, I'm just going to play safe because yeah. I am so damn confident. That's it. Let's hear from the man himself over the interview desk. Thank you very much, boys, here on the desk with Nurture. I'm just got to jump straight in. You walked over, and it was like a bit of a, whew, it's over, it's done. Well, just talk us through that last game, and especially that big attack that everyone was like, oh, there's Banelings in there. Well, I, I, I was sure I was ahead. Well, so I went to attack. I had some uh, money left, so I could uh, remax again. But, well, I, I looked at his army, and I thought it's quite small. So <laughs> I, I, I said, like, yeah, let's go. Let's go win this game. And then there's Banelings in the, in the Overlords. Well, that was quite a surprise, actually. <laughs> I didn't expect that at all. And yeah, it's, well, I had to run to my base. Otherwise, if I, I, th I think that if I stay there, then I, I could lose this game. It's a bit of doubt creep in that this is all going downhill and just, well, talk us through the emotions. Is it just like, oh, I'm actually going to lose a game that I've already won? What type of things are going through your mind? Well, I was uh, shaky for sure when I saw the Banelings. But I know it's quite a big commitment, especially in ZVZ. I mean, if I know he has Benix in the Overlords and I go standard composition, especially since I went already Hive and Free Free, then I knew I can still win the game. Just, I'm, uh, I cannot lose to counterattack. I'm actually not used to seeing you like this, Nurture. Over the years, you've always been such a calm and collected guy, but when you walked over here, you're like shaking, it's like you're full of adrenaline. Where is this coming from? Yeah, I don't know, maybe, I mean, in the past, I felt uh, more comfortable playing StarCraft 2, so mm -hmm. I was, you know, more confident. I think it comes back a little bit in Legacy of the Void again, but not in Heart of the Swarm for sure. Uh, and well, TLO is a very strong opponent right now in ZVZ, mm -hmm. so well, I didn't expect to win 100%, but well, my ZV is not, not bad either. Yeah, I think uh, game number one was really cool as well. You've been pretty vocal about that you haven't played as much as you used to do in like Wings of Liberty when you were truly one of the absolute best in Europe. But I think game number one, Bridgehead, was a pretty damn cool game too. And I was really impressed with your army movement. You, like, you still got the magic touch when it comes to swinging around and trying to make plays happen. Like, yeah, what do you I contribute think, to? Yeah, I think that my weakness is uh, in the mid game. Mm -hmm. I used to master Roche uh, many times. But when I, I go to the late game, I am quite confident because my army movement and positioning was always, uh, I think, the best, at least in my case. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome. How, how is your time divided right now? I mean, is it summer holidays for you currently? Are you not in uni? Yeah, it's holidays because I finished university. I don't know how it's called in English, but it's the first stage. Yeah. I'm probably going uh, to university again in a few months. But right now, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not studying, so I have holidays. 
So have you and played a lot more StarCraft then? I just take it? Uh, well, more uh, like more Legacy, Legacy of the Void, actually, yeah. uh, than Heart of the Swarm. So uh, you play Legacy and, and then you come back into to Heart of the Swarm. Is it a, a major difference for you or are you still able to, I mean, you just beat in TLO, are you still able to still perform well? I mean, I still understand the game quite well, uh, but Legacy of the Void helps my mechanics, mm. uh, which, as I said, uh, I'm lacking a little bit in the mid game. So yeah, that helps also in the heart of the swarm. Last but not least, do you have any preference in going up against either Patience or Stardust? I don't know. I think they're both of them had quite shaky results lately, mm -hmm. losing to not so good like Zerg players. So I think I have quite a good chance against both of them. Uh, you know, I practiced a little bit versus Protoss for WCS. Mm -hmm. I lost to Harstam, but I consider him a very good ZVP player. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel uh, it's not going to be so bad. All right, I wish you best of luck. Yeah, best of luck in your next match here, Nurture. Congratulations on the starting win of the day in Group D. Make sure to check out all other action, of course, always on plays.tv. Not only highlights of games that have already happened, but first-person action from the players themselves. We'll be right back as we go to the winner's match.